All right, so this is... All right, so this is a all aluminum racing radiator from CX Racing. And what I like about this is at first it was really cheap. It was 150 bucks shipped. Uh, I like that it has an integrated radiator cap, unlike the factory one, which does not have the cap integrated. And uh, it's actually designed for the MK4 Supra uh, because technically they don't make a radiator for the SC. But this thing should bolt right in because they share the same radiator design. I was kind of wary of getting a radiator that was so cheap online, but I was doing research and people that have these seem to like them a lot and they don't have any issues. So, you know, I, I figured for 150 bucks I would give it a shot and if it leaks after a year, then I'll pick up a new one. The welds all seem to be pretty good, so hopefully this will end up working out pretty well. And these little half pipes right here should let me bolt this straight into the factory mount on the SC. I'm really hoping this works. So the factory radiator is one inch thick exactly and the new one is two inches thick. So overall, it should be a really nice upgrade over the factory one. But, and to keep the radiator cool, I picked up these fans from eBay. And these are for, these are from a 01 Lexus GS300. And what's cool about these fans is they are factory OEM fans. They have, these have like 140,000 miles on them, I think, from some car in Florida. And I discovered these when I was searching on the Super Forums to see what people use for the electronic fans. And they said that the fans from either the IS300 or GS300 uh, are great because they are very high CFM. They have OEM Lexus reliability. And what's amazing is it has a built-in coolant reservoir. So I don't have to go and buy it in an external coolant reservoir. It's, it's just built right into the fans itself. And this should hopefully more or less just fit right up to the Supra, the Supra radiator. So I'm just gonna drop this guy in here and see if it fits. And I'm really hoping it does. Here we go. Fits just like stock. It's great. I just noticed that these little caps here have a rubber insert and it's missing from this side. So I'll have to get another one of those from a junkyard. But hopefully otherwise this thing should bolt right up. All right, well something is not working here because this mount bracket here is a good two inches higher than the surface of the radiator. And this side is just about the same. So this radiator does seem to be quite a bit shorter than the factory SC radiator. So I need to either raise the whole radiator up to match these guys or find some way to make a new bracket to mount from here to hold the radiator in place. So that's fun. After weighing my options here, I decided I think my best thing to do is to leave the radiator sitting in its factory holes down there in the bottom and then just putting something inside here that will actually, you know, make it so this thing fits because there's a good I mean, there's a good two inches that I need to make up. So I'm gonna take my old hockey puck here that I already drilled for my old motor mounts, cut it in half, and kind of just form it to fit in here so it'll fit properly underneath the bracket there. I think that's gonna probably be my best bet. So what I'll need to do is just chop this down in half and then just kind of form this with my saw to make it so it kind of fits in this little pattern here and then also around this guy. So I'll be kind of just making a bigger version of this right here. That's some nasty stuff. But it fits perfectly. I look and smell like I just spent the whole day at the racetrack, just covered in burnt rubber. It's nasty stuff. So now that I have my rough shape cut out, I need to just kind of start cutting the bottom part off here in small sections until it fits perfectly in place here, and this can be bolted down. So I'm gonna have to take probably up to there off or so, and just try to match as close as I can with the circumference of this sort of half circle here. Well, it's still a little bit loose. The, uh, the rubber part's kind of moving around inside this bracket because there's nothing on this side to stop it from moving over anymore. So what I might do is just put a little more rubber or some cushioning up top here to really kind of clamp down on there. Or I might have to find some other way to kind of just clamp this down. This is the right height now. It's just not really staying completely in place. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so my new mounts are not perfect, but 
they're very sturdy now. It doesn't, you know, the radiator is no longer moving around. I don't think they're going to come loose or anything. But what I could do if it does happen in the future is just put two little bolts to the top of this thing, which will keep the rubber part kind of, you know, perfectly centered in place and it won't move anywhere. And that'll stop it from moving at all. But for now, you know, there's a little bit of play in there, but I'm pushing it fairly hard and it's not moving that much. So I think I can call the radiator mounted. So the fans obviously are not for an SC400 or a Supra, but I'm hoping that it'll fit down inside of here and it won't. Oh shit. They're like a hair too wide. So I need to trim just the outer edge on both sides of the fans here and hopefully that'll be enough for it to fit within the frame rails in the car. And this is the bottom right here and it sits 10 inches into the frame rail. So I have to measure 10 inches from the bottom about there. And then trim it to here. And then hopefully it'll just slide right in place. Nothing ever goes the way it's supposed to. All right, please work. Yeah! Perfect. Sweet! Actually, it fits really, really well. So now I gotta just figure out how to mount this thing up to the radiator. That's awesome. It fits so good. What the hell is this thing? I don't need you anymore. All right, cool, so it fits really well. I gotta just figure out how I'm gonna mount this thing up now because none of the holes line up with the holes on the radiator, of course, because Supra, radiator, GS300, fans, <laughs> SC400 chassis. Um, so I just gotta figure out how to wire that guy up or mount it up there and hopefully that's it. Otherwise, everything else fits really well. It's kind of amazing. So dimensionally, this thing fits perfectly. And I love that it has the coolant overflow attached, which is just genius. Um, but for it to fit totally flush to the radiator, this tab right here is hitting the little um, metal piece, whatever this little stud is. So it's not sitting quite flush, but it, I mean, it's, it's off a tiny, tiny little bit. Isn't that big of a deal? Um, but otherwise, you know, none of the other mount holes line up other than this one up here almost lines up, but really nothing lines up exactly. So I got to figure out just some custom way to mount this up. Well, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how to get these fans to mount up to the radiator securely. And um, i got to say, I'm not coming up with a lot of good solutions. I did try some experiments, like taking some aluminum plate and making a little bracket right there. But the problem there is that's going to put a lot of pressure on this plate. And it's kind of a situation where this could just bend really easily and then it could break my plastic or it could cause other issues. And uh, I don't really want... Also, by the way, that works only on this corner but not the other corners of the radiator so um you know i did manage to get one bolt to bolt up in the bottom here but it, it's not even actually lined up very well because it's pushing the entire radiator to one side and not fitting very well you can see kind of a gap right here so you know i've, I've tried avoiding this on this channel but in this situation i think it might make sense to do something like use zip ties and you know this isn't the right way to do it i wouldn't suggest doing it but because uh, a lot of uh, aftermarket fans actually ship with zip ties as the you know, official way to mount them, I don't feel like this is really super bad and I can use this temporarily until I you know, find a better solution. In the meantime, I'm thinking, let's just pop this guy on here and uh, see if it works. What I might do actually is go through and take that last bolt off the bottom so I can fit the entire radiator correctly now that I'm going to be using zip ties. I don't need to have that bolt in place. You can see once I took the bolt out, look how much closer it is. I don't even need to get any of those little uh, foam things here. It just fits perfectly to this radiator. So this seems to make the most sense for now. It'll be a temporary fix. I'm going to say that for now and we'll see what happens in the future. But you know, this will be a way that I can securely install this guy. And I'll use probably two zip ties per corner to make sure that it's nicely secure. As much as I hate using zip ties, they are attached and the fans are super secure and not going anywhere now. And the radiator is also very secure. So, you know, 
not happy about it, but it will be a temporary solution until I can get something more permanent. And then um, in the meantime, it's on to my hoses. All right, so for these radiator hoses, my plan is pretty simple. I'm going to measure the diameter of the upper port of the radiator and the upper port of the water pump. And the same thing for the thermostat housing outlet and then the uh, lower port on the radiator. And I'm going to, hopefully they'll all be the same size in, in diameter. And I think they seem fairly close. So hopefully that won't be too big of an issue. Uh, and then for shape, I'm going to take some coat hangers and bend them in the shape that I need for both hoses. And then hopefully I can take these to a auto parts store and either say, find these for me in the right diameter or they'll let me in the back room and I can do it myself. So here we have the new shapes for the radiator hoses. I'm gonna to go to the auto parts store, see what I can find, and pick up a new thermostat while I'm there. This is gonna be a lot harder than I thought it would be. There's literally an entire wall of hoses here. And uh, it's good that there are options, but this might take me a while. This seems like a good fit for the lower hose. It's not exact, but I think it's gonna work. For some reason, this simple zigzag was way harder to find but I got it. All right guys, it took about 45 minutes, but I got both hoses and I think they're getting suspicious of me. So I'm gonna get out of here. And right, hopefully these things work. Let's find out. Oh, that looks like money. So this will definitely fit. Oh, that takes a lot of effort actually to get on there. And everything clears. Perfect. All right, while I'm getting this side of the water pump buttoned up, I wanted to go over the thermostat really quick. I went and picked up this thermostat. It's a new uh, Motorrad factory temperature thermostat. And I went with a factory temperature because the lower temperatures, all they really do, like 160 degrees, for example, all they do is it takes longer for the engine to warm up because operating temperature of this engine will be over 200 degrees anyway. So having a factory rated thermostat temperature versus one that's a lot lower doesn't really do a whole lot for cooling the engine down. That's more about your radiator's efficiency and how good your fans are. So this is the factory thermostat with the 04 and later housing. Now there's two types of water pumps for the LS engines. Pre-04, like a 98 F-Body, for example, had a one-piece housing with a thermostat. It was all one piece put together and you couldn't separate them. And then after, maybe it's, I guess it's 04 and later, or after 04, is a, a two-piece design just like this. Um, and even if you get a water pump for a pre-04 car, uh, now you're gonna be getting this two-piece design. So I went and got this thermostat, which I will just pop in here and then I'll install using a paper gasket, which I'll put some uh, RTV on both sides. It's just a very, very thin layer. I also picked up this little guy, which will, I'll use to uh, recirculate my heater valves here. And uh, these are, I think these are actually the same diameter, but I know this part fits over here pretty well. These are actually two different size. I think it's like three, three quarter inch and five eighths inch. Um, pipes here, but I'm hoping I can squeeze this side over as well if I can get it on there. So I'll do that in a second. So I'm going to put a very tiny amount of RTV here on the gasket, just more like just to keep it in place than anything else. So we'll pop the new thermostat in, rubbing up this little rubber piece right here with a little notch in the housing, just like that. Pretty simple. And then pop it on. Hopefully I can make this guy squeeze over this and fit on there. That would be awesome. I know that side's gonna work, but how about this side? Nah, that's not gonna work. I'll just go online and get the actual proper part. So the last thing to figure out now is this bottom hose, and I'm really hoping that this is gonna be close enough. I think 
we should be in good shape. I'll need to just cut this guy off and pull it in away from the uh, sway bar. But I think we're going to be good. No going back now. So the tricky part is that this is an inch and a half hose and this is an inch and a quarter. So what I'm trying to try here is to take an inch and a quarter diameter from the other hose on the top of the radiator and sliding this around here and hopefully I can slide this on top of both of them to kind of give it the extra tight you know grip that it needs. Yeah this isn't gonna work as I figured. I'll have to find some other way to do this. Alright well my first attempt didn't work so I went and got this guy which is an actual hose adapter that goes from an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter. So hopefully if I slide this guy probably in here first and then onto here, it'll just fit. Well, that is on. Sweet. All right, there we have the lower and upper hoses in place on the radiator. And then from below. I also went online and picked up the proper fitting heater hose bypass rather than this one I got from the auto parts store which is the exact same size for both ends. This one is designed for this water pump exactly with two different sized ends so you can see one's bigger than the other one so it should fit right on. Just like that. There we go. So with that, my cooling system should be all wrapped up. Well, the radiator is mounted up, the fans are installed, the hoses are all installed and bolted in place. Everything should be good to go. I have my built-in uh, radiator reservoir all good to go here. So I should be happy with this, but I'm not. And uh, I think it's just because I don't like how these mounts turned out. You know, I have the rubber in place here and I have, you know, it, it's, it's technically not moving when I push on it. So it should be holding just fine but I really don't like the zip ties and I don't like that the radiator is not bolted to the actual car. So I was thinking, you know, what could I do to fix this? And then I realized that I had this uh, leftover piece of sheet aluminum plate here, which I could uh, use to make kind of a, a radiator block off plate here. That would, you know, a lot of vendors have that just so air can't get up and around the radiator. So I was gonna use that and then I realized, well, actually, if I extended these edges up to here, I could actually just bolt these to the actual frame of the car, get rid of these mounts entirely, and then create kind of a custom uh, air block off plate and also you know, shroud and then also mount at the same time where I will use pieces of this to kind of go up and mount to this bolt and mount to these side pieces and then kind of curl around and actually bolt the top of the radiator you know, solidly fixed to the actual frame. And I think that's going to be actually an awesome solution to get rid of this all together. Problem is this plate is a half inch too short, which is really, really unfortunate because it's Saturday afternoon and all of the metal supply stores around me are closed. Uh, so unfortunately I can't do all that for this episode. So I don't know. I think that's going to be a better solution. All right, guys, that wraps up the episode. I'm happy with my progress, even though I'm not really happy with how these mounts turned out. Uh, it's a shame that I don't have enough metal on this uh, aluminum sheet right here to do my little shroud mount that I want to do. So that'll be next episode. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, um, but you know, we have the radiator installed. The fans are all, uh, you know, they fit at least. <laughs> They're not uh, finally installed, but they, they do fit well. I have my uh, hoses worked out. My heater bypass is all taken care of. So overall, uh, really good progress, and I'm happy with this uh, so far. Uh, next episode, we'll be doing the new shroud upper radiator mount, and then uh, after that, will be oil cooler installed, and then get my my switch panel inside hooked up to my wiring harness, and then pretty soon after that, I can fire it up. And I, again, I've been saying this thing forever, but getting so close, I can taste it now. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more fully spooled. Lots more coming. Uh, check out my social media links after the end of the video, and uh, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.